Hi everyone, my name is Antoine, I'm an industrial engineer and I'm a CNC supply chain manager here at 3D Hubs. Uh, and within the supply chain uh, team, I'm in charge of uh, all the CNC machining processes. And uh, in this uh, video of our series about materials and uh, CNC machining, I'd like to present today uh, probably one of the most popular materials, even though I say that about all materials, but this one really is. And uh, today's material is stainless steel. Um, so basically I'd like to run you through um, a couple different materials that we offer here at 3D Hubs, and then as well as uh, a little bit of a special project, um, an end part uh, that we're gonna be uh, using stainless steel with, uh, which is gonna be a watch case. So stay tuned and then, uh, yeah, I hope you'll enjoy. Two of the most common ones that I wanna present today that are the stainless steel 304 and then the stainless steel 316. Uh, you either have 304 or 304L, depending on the carbon content in it. But basically 304 is one of the most popular stainless steel because it has a very decent chemical corrosion. So meaning you can use it in environments where you will have chemicals, where you will have um, exposure to water. Let's say if you want to go towards uh, marine applications or even uh, environments where you have chlorine or harsher chemicals, uh, your second choice would be 316. So the first part that I'd like to show to you today is uh, our nanosatellite bracket, as we call it here at 3D Hubs. We call it the nanosatellite panel here because it's based after a design that uh, was supposed to be the first iterations of a design that would go inside of a satellite. Um, of course, if you were to put this part in a real satellite, you probably wouldn't machine it out of stainless steel because it has quite a high weight. Uh, but still, I thought we'd show this one to you in stainless steel because I think the geometry suits very well stainless steel. So if this were to be used on another application than aerospace, uh, where you have uh, some harsh chemicals or even just exposure to outside air, um, this material would do really great. And here you can see on camera just how well the material machines. Um, of course, this is probably not a material that you would want to use in as machined state uh, for cosmetic applications, of course, like all of our as machined materials, uh, actually, because you can still see the, the, the machining marks uh, all over the place. So of course, when you're looking for engineering parts where, uh, you know, the, if you have some GDNT requirements, so some uh, geometrical requirements, if you have some flatness requirements and such, um, this material can be really great. Uh, it has very good dimensional stability. Uh, the as machine state can be quite, uh, quite stable as well, and you can have some nice repeatability on uh, your uh, dimensional features. As you can see, it's totally possible to make uh, stainless steel parts out of sheet metal. In fact, we, uh, uh, we do quite a bit of them for customers who want uh, sheet metal part, uh, you know, that will resist corrosion. This one, I think, was made as a prototype for, um, uh, for a hamburger flipper pallet for um, opening party at the office uh, last year. That, that was quite fun. But anyway, it was just an excuse to uh, showcase a nice design where you have you know, some very sharp edges on the inside um, that are done uh, with uh, quite a cosmetically pleasant uh, laser cutting uh, and then of course a very fine brush on the surface. We have of course the two other uh, gear gearboxes or uh, small gearboxes as I like to call them. Uh, the first one is made out of uh, stainless steel uh, 316 that has been finely brushed. Uh, as you can see, this has been made at one of our suppliers with, uh, uh, with first a very good uh, machining um, uh, and then that has been finely brushed by hand. Uh, I believe typically if this were part, you would ask you know, for, for, a very, uh, for a very nice surface finish and a, and a very consistent flatness so that you can actually have a gasket on here and then close something. Um, and typically if you had oil or any, you know, any, any stuff that would corrode, stainless steel could be, even though a bit overkill, it could be a very good application for a gearbox or a reductor of this kind. Um, the brushing you probably wouldn't need uh, for the, at least for the inside of the part, but for the outside of the part, if you want to um, uh, maybe get something that is, again, semi-cosmetic or get something that is, let's say, more fine if you want to powder coat it or if you want to you know, prepare it to have some kind of a secondary uh, surface uh, coating on it, and then maybe the brushing could be a good idea for you because it will really smoothen out uh, your surface. Another one that is really common here at 3D Hubs, really popular finish that is done after the brushing generally for parts is the electro polishing. Uh, stainless steel is a, a material that can be electro polished, which means you're, you're going to put your parts in a, a very acid bath and while running some electricity through the part, you're actually gonna 
going to smooth out the part at a microscopic level. I should note that electro polishing does not give you mirror polished parts. Um, it does not do that at all, but however, it will smoothen out all the parts that you have uh, at a microscopic level and make them slightly more bright and uh, remove the dullness of the part. So let's say here this part has been brushed before being run through an electro polishing process. So if you look at the difference between the two, it doesn't appear that obvious at first, but if you look at the sheen of the part, the brushing marks are still visible, even more so on the electro polished part but then the part is really more reflectivity. Um, and uh, yeah, it is, it is a part that is more smooth. And I don't know if you can exactly see on camera, but even though those two parts are stainless, actually this one catches slightly less the, the fingerprints. I'm just gonna turn them so that you can see a little bit the difference. So even though the surface roughness looks almost exactly identical, uh, you can see here that the electro polished part has, has much more shine to it, uh, but it won't change the primary surface texture. So if you were to wear an um, as machined part or smooth machine part through an electro polishing process, you would still see uh, some machining marks underneath, but these would be kind of smoothed out a little bit like, um, yeah, a little bit like uh, running some water on, on sand. You would still see the primary features, but the, the primary features would still be there, but it would just smooth them out. Uh, electro polishing is really great for engineering great parts because as it removes uh, as it removes all the uh, all the literal nooks and crannies on your parts, uh, let's say uh, it makes the material much easier to clean and less prone to surface uh, to surface um, uh, to surface area. Let's say. Um, uh, corrosion. So let's say you've got very little nooks and crannies, it'll, it'll leave much more room for, let's say, bacteria to develop. If you're looking at uh, something that has to go uh, through sterilization process. Uh, so for instance, electro polishing is very popular when you have parts that need to be either food safe in stainless steel or parts that will be later on used in the medical field, such as medical tools or anything really that has to be run through a disinfection and sterilization process. This little guy here, you've also seen the design before. Um, I wanted to show this design again. This one is a 304, not 304L, so different carbon content. So you can see that the color is very, very slightly different, probably because this was not the same raw material. But anyway, what matters here is that again, with this, um, with this geometry, you can see, uh, you can see that uh, we, we made this, I think, with turn mill combination. So you can see uh, the milling marks on the side that were done uh, with a very, very low surface roughness. This is purely as machined. Uh, so what we would call smooth machining here. Uh, so you can see here all the, all the turning marks. Um, the surface state is quite nice, again, this is not a cosmetic part. This is really an engineering grade part. Uh, this is kind of a, one of our first brackets, actually, that our engineers designed. Um, yeah, again, showing really the, the, the capacity for this metal to have a really clean surface state uh, and, and a really clean surface when, uh, uh, when machined with proper feeds and, and, and cutting tools. Uh, really, again, this probably won't rust uh, at all and will be really resistant to chemical corrosion. So actually for this last part of the video, I thought I would make uh, things a little bit differently this time and show you maybe something a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more real life, so to speak. Um, I'm, uh, as I said previously, I'm, I'm an industrial engineer, but I have some uh, mechanical engineering background as well. And uh, my coworkers and uh, the people I've worked with know I'm a little bit of a watch nerd. And actually when we thought about what kind of uh, parts to showcase for a stainless steel video, one of the first things actually I thought about was, hang on, I've seen customers who do some parts for watches for us, some cosmetic parts out of stainless steel. So I instantly thought, well, why not, uh, why not make a watch case for ourselves and then just uh, assemble it for our viewers here uh, on the channel. And uh, that's more or less what we started doing. So we have a little bit, I, I dig through my uh, library and, uh, and you know, uh, just brought some books. Uh, they're in French, but it shouldn't matter for the technical drawings. Uh, I gathered some, uh, some technical drawings and, and my old books uh, from university about, uh, you know, how to design a watch, uh, what are the, um, what are the rules, the mechanical rules, the, the fits that you have, and, and I went back a little bit to the drawing board and, um, and we kind of defined what we wanted to have here uh, for a watch that we could showcase uh, here in the video. Um, I've got a few examples uh, here, I've got in another book that you can see uh, to explain to you a little bit how a watch, how a mechanical watch uh, works and why it's such an interesting case uh, for stainless steel here. 
you basically have, uh, maybe as this one as well shows, for more traditional watches actually, uh, but that works for electronic watches as well. You have the case, that's the outside of the watch, and then inside you've got a movement, and then you've got the wristwatch, of course. Um, the movement, there are some specialized people who do it. Uh, some people will do their own, let's say even if they make connected watches or whether they make uh, mechanical watches. Uh, some people are specialized in that and, uh, and you know, the, you, you can have anything you want basically. But the watch cases, um, it's basically precision CNC machining that is, for the most part, uh, outside of luxury watches, that is oftentimes made out of stainless steel. Uh, because stainless steel is quite a nice biocompatibility for outside body applications. Let's say uh, if, you want, if you have a stainless steel watch uh, sitting on your skin all day, that's probably, unless uh, you have very bad rashes or allergies, stainless steel is probably going to be a very good material, actually, uh, for a watch case. Um, so here I've got two examples, actually, of watches. Uh, this little one that I uh, that I brought is um, is my watch that I've had for a long time. It's a mechanical watch. I've removed the wrist watch so that you can see a little bit, and it is a stainless steel case. Um, this one is actually more than 10 years old, and you can see the case has already gone through a lot. Uh, there are some scratches on it. Uh, the brushing is a little bit gone. There are, there are some dents on it, but chemically there is no spot. Uh, chemical uh, stain at all and you can see the movement is very well protected inside um, and and yeah the, the stainless steel case basically is as brand as new apart from the cosmetic scratches that there's on it there's no sign of corrosion or anything like that so after wearing it daily for about 10 years you can really see that here stainless steel is really nice if you were to compare that let's say to a brass uh, watch case that has been let's say chrome plated for instance for all the watches uh, you know, the, the plating would wear off after a while, the brass is so soft that sometimes it gets really dented. Um, so yeah, stainless steel is really nowadays a popular material for, uh, uh, for watches, at, at least not for luxury ones. So here's the little, uh, here's the little um, watch case that we made uh, for you here today on the video. We're not going to assemble it uh, fully today uh, for you. Uh, but uh, here it is. It's, it's made of stainless steel. Uh, it's been pre-assembled already. There's some fine brushing done on it, and uh, yeah, the, the, the really interesting thing about this is that um, we already knew the, the movement that we ordered to a company that is specialized in making watches movement. So I should know this is a fully mechanical movement. I shouldn't shake too much. I should know that if this were a higher end watch, I would not really touch the movement with my hands, but I would wear gloves, of course. But uh, yeah, I don't really mind for this one. Uh, I like it how it is. Uh, yeah, I already installed the dial on it earlier today, and then uh, yeah, the movement is really to be wound up. Uh, later on, when I'm gonna uh, when I'm gonna assemble it, I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna put the, the crown uh, uh, shaft back in. Sorry, I don't know all the English words for watches, but basically this is what you're gonna use to uh, set up the time, and then um, and then uh, wind up the mechanism. And this this little thing is gonna turn like uh, like what you'd see on there, basically the little the little spring that you see here. So basically when, when that's done, um, we're actually going to take the movement and you can watch me while I'm doing this. This is more or less, I'm not going to say straightforward operation, but this is basically all we're going to do later on is put the movement inside of the case and then there we'll have it. Um, we have made sure that all the fits and all the diameters here are the correct fits. This is quite a tight tolerance because later on we're going to need to put a gasket, uh, some kind of, not an O-ring, but just a plastic, uh, a plastic ring. Uh, and then we're going to force press the, the, the glass, the mineral glass that we purchased specially for that uh, fit to the dimension. Of course, we're going to put the glass in, in place. Um, we're going to put some screws to tie it up together. Uh, and then, of course, there's going to be the what you call the crown here that's going to be installed as well. We've got parts for that. And then afterwards, everything's going to be closed with the uh, back cover that is transparent and made out of stainless steel as well. And more or less here, you already have a vision of what the... Uh, 3D Hub's assemble watch is going to look like and I believe we're just going to show you the finished watch in, in another video so that you can see what the finished product looks like. Um, we really thought this would be a good idea for you to put back in context what stainless steel parts are actually used for um, and as it turns out as I said earlier we actually do have quite a bit of customers who have reached out to us uh, to get uh, parts cases machined in the past 
Um, those are, of course, very cosmetic parts. And of course, you need to make sure to fully align um, with, you know, with our production team and our sales team to kind of reach out to, to them and say, what kind of finish do you want? It's not uh, often just a matter of saying, oh, I'm just going to get it on an as machine finish and, you know, uh, I'm going to have a beautiful watch. Sometimes a little bit of manual finishing may be needed. Uh, some, poly some people have, um, have even chosen some uh, dye polishing as well to make these cases or some electro polishing sometimes if there's been some manual polishing done before. Uh, but really, lots of things possible with this material. Uh, and I really hope you're going to enjoy uh, staying tuned with us to see the watch fully assembled next time. And then uh, I hope to see you in our next video for the next materials.